다음 순서는 산드라 페이 박사입니다. 페이 박사는 하버드 로스쿨의 인권 프로그램의 개원 연구원이십니다. 일본 도쿄 소피아 대학교 인류학과 부교수로서 일하고 계시고요. 각종 수상 후보에 오른 북한의 인권에 관한 책들을 저술하셨습니다. 우리 워싱턴에서 오랫동안 기다리고 계셨던 산드라 페이 교수에게 마이크를 넘기겠습니다. 마이크를 받아주시기 바랍니다. 큰 박수로 맞이해주십시오. 안녕하십니까. 음, 초대를 주셔서 대단히 너무 감사합니다. 음, 제가 지금부터 영어로 발표하겠습니다. 음, so welcome and thank you. I trust we are all here today to learn about how to rig an election. There are many ways to rig an election. Ballots can be stuffed. Opposition fighters can be arrested. or disappeared. You can intimidate supporters of the opposition. When the ballots come in, you can forget how to count, adding ballots here and subtracting ballots there. You can buy your ballots. You can make the voting lines so long that people turn away. When you rig an election, it becomes an act of theater, a play at reality. You play a game with the lives of citizens. In such a case, elections are not a measure of how well you represent the people, but the mechanism by which corrupt leadership destroys society. These methods are old school. Let me tell you where we are today. Technology has made us more democratic. But don't get too excited, because the corrupt keep up with technology and they adapt fast. Some of us might have thought that the internet was a naturally democratizing force, that having mobile phones was, that having cameras on your phone was, that having social media platforms and interactive channels and YouTubers was. And yes, these are ways of making our views count. And it's true, technology is a potentially democratizing force, but not necessarily so. In fact, Maybe it's possible to say that technology is inherently totalitarian, that unless we bring it to heel like a wild dog, it will turn master. Nowadays, there are savvy, subtle, and invisible ways to ruin a country. What I'm talking about is how you can take down a country without firing a shot, without bloodshed. Ironically, The power comes through invisibility. Stealth makes this technology. To those of us living our lives busily day to day, we may not think of such things. It may sound like science fiction. The notion that foreign governments would try to usurp power or undermine leadership with teenagers in dark basements on laptops. It might seem laughable. To talk about bots, troll farms, and hackers chipping away at democracy may sound conspiratorial, but it is not conspiracy. Russia, China, and other countries use bots, troll farms, and a range of algorithms to warp news stories, to create ersatz civil societies, to manufacture a world that warps reality for consumers on social media. such that up is down. The following groups have shown that this is happening. Look at the, wor the work of Bellingcat. Look at the work of Hamilton 2.0. Look at digital Sherlock's. Look at the group Forensic Architecture, which exposed Russia's nefarious tricks in Syria, Ukraine, and elsewhere. Without the careful work of these technological sleuths, these big data detectives, we would probably have no idea. The backdoor thief could claim he was never there, but thanks to these groups and others, we know. So when we talk of election rigging, we are talking about theft. That's why experts making assessment of election fraud in DR Congo 
said the election was stolen. The machines which arrived in DR Congo from South Korea were called cheating machines. Cong <laughs> Congolese folks were irate, rightly so, and directed their anger at the machines. 7,000 of them were torched. In South Korea, those putting these machines into employment are said to have used software and big data that seem to have been test driven in other landscapes successfully. Leading up to the April 15th, 2020 election, the private data of South Koreans was provided to the Chinese company Tencent. And in turn, this geographic and demographic information was used to model the fraud. Statisticians have tested the data set of information available about the election, and the findings triggered several indicators that fraud did take place. And many in South Korean media are just now beginning to talk about it. Some of the stories are as follows. Votes from one district were found in another. More votes were cast than re registered voters in South Korea. Voting machines were not supposed to be able to communicate with each other or be, SU or be USB accessible. They were. Cameras were supposed to observe the machines, but none were present, and so on. What happens when people fear that an election has been stolen? What does it do to a democracy to have a rigged election? It erodes trust in democratic, democratic processes. Media and politicians need to take the lead. As the fifth estate, media need to check and investigate. International media need to monitor. Rights organizations need to inquire and uncover what happened. Guilty parties need to be held to account and trust in democratic processes can then be restored. Thank you for listening to me.